All right. Hello, hello. My name is April Malone with Yes, I Work From Home, and this is the podcast. Today, I have Nicole Eplin with me. Nicole and I go back about, I don't know, eight years ago, no, I think. we Probably at least, yeah. We knew each other Lillian. back in... In our daughters were babies when we met. Yeah, so. Southern Illinois. Yeah. So she lives in a yeah. small town in Southern Illinois and she's a pharmacist. So I am so excited to have you here today. Thank you. I didn't know you were working from home until you mentioned it when I was talking about the podcast. So it's pretty unusual when you say you're a pharmacist and you work from home. A lot of people are wondering how that works. So tell us how does this work? So I, <laughs> yeah, I have a, a rather unconventional job. I actually maintain um, the software that we use. So I do a lot of building protocols and building new medications whenever they are approved to be added to our formulary. Um, a lot of work with order sets protocols um, and working closely with our pharmacists and designing their workflows and things in their software to meet their needs. Um, but we actually do have some of our staff pharmacists that have worked from home a little bit during the pandemic too. When we were really trying to keep everybody out of the hospitals, we were doing a little bit of remote verification. So pharmacists were verifying orders from home for a brief period of time. Do you work for a hospital, a medical clinic, or just a pharmacy? I don't think I quite got that. Yeah, I work for a large health system, not large, large for our little rural area. We have um, three hospitals, one of which is critical access, and we've also got uh, a lot of clinics. I only support the inpatient side, but once in a while I do cross over to the, the ambulatory or clinic side and do a little bit of work for them. Would you say your job is more tech-based, or do you still have, uh, do you still get to do the medical side? So whenever I first started, people said, oh, you're going to lose your your knowledge, but I really have not lost. I've only gained because when a new drug is approved to be on the formulary or a new drug comes out on the market, I'm the one working with our clinical pharmacists to do all the research up front and get everything built before we even release it to be used on our patients. So I'm the one designing all the safety behind all of those medications in our in our system. So so let's talk about how long you've been working from home. I know that you've been working from home more or less full time recently, but mm -hmm. it goes back a little bit further than that, right? Yeah. So um, whenever I first took the the software IT job, we had the flexibility to work from home. Initially, it was sort of on an as needed basis. So you're not feeling well, but you're well enough to work, but you don't want to come in and, you know, expose your coworkers to whatever cold you have, or if you have a sick kid, or if you have a big project coming up and you want to be able to work from home and, and work more interrupt, uninterrupted. Um, we've had the flexibility to do that. And then they formalized it a couple years ago to two days a week. And were you taking so that past, option? Um, when I could, um, my schedule is pretty packed with meetings and the, the um, my one up that I report to is um, of a, a generation that really feels like in-person meetings are best. And um, that attitude is very different from, um, I think people in our generation, not that I'm young, I'm not, but um, people in our generation are more, you know, we grew up with cell phones from, you know, I got my first smartphone when I was in my mid twenties. And before that I had a cell phone at the age of 18. And we've pretty much always had internet access, even though it was like the back in the day, slow dial up. So we're a lot more comfortable with technology and more comfortable with not having to have face-to-face -face meetings. We run into fewer technical glitches just because we're used to logging in and troubleshooting on our own. Um, whereas I really see that now with the pandemic, now that we've been, you know, mandated to hold all of our meetings via WebEx or Teams wherever possible and very, very few in-person meetings, you do notice that um, some generations struggle with that. Right, right. And you were... In the green room, where we were talking a few minutes ago, you were talking about the same generational thing coming with um, having kids at home while you're working. Do you want to talk about your family a little bit and what that's been like for you? Yeah. Yeah. So I have three kids. Um, they are, they range in age from six, almost seven to 11. Um, I worked part time when they were smaller. So I've been home with them quite a bit. And I've always had that job where I got interrupted quite a bit, even on my days off. So they're used to seeing mom work. Um, it wasn't a brand new thing to them whenever I started working from home and trying to care for them. Um, but it definitely has presented a great number of challenges. Um, I showed you earlier my workspace. So we moved my desk into our, we have a little like breakfast nook 
area in our kitchen and it overlooks the woods and it's just absolutely beautiful. And I love having my desk here and being able to look out and watch the squirrels and the birds and my dogs run around and play all day and my cats. Um, it really, I, you know, from someone who worked in a little bitty office without windows for years, um, I love, I'm always outside. I love being outside. So I love having that view. The downside was I moved it into a much busier area of our house, but at the time, all the kids were in school, and we thought, oh, this is this is going to be great. The only time I work from home is when they're at school, so it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll um, be fine, they said. <laughs> <laughs> and then the pandemic hit, and here I am, my desk in the middle of the kitchen, and they're sitting, you know, a few steps away at the dining room table trying to work. How much of your job is on camera or video? Um, so initially our work from home days were kind of our lazy like pajama days whenever we had it more informal and it was just a couple days a week and there was never an expectation that we turn our camera on. So whenever we formalized the policy and our our team was actually the first to move to a permanent work from home situation. And when we formalized that, it was with the expectation that everyone is going to have their camera on um, during meetings so that you can see everybody's faces and expressions and whatnot. And we found that that works better than being in person with masks on, because at least if you're on camera, you can see someone's entire face and see if they're smiling or what other expression. So most of us have grown to prefer it. Hmm. Yeah. My husband is working from home currently during the pandemic and they never, ever, ever turn their cameras on. They just have like their profile picture up uh, yesterday. It surprised me because he had to turn on his camera, but it was a different type of appointment that he was in. And I was mm -hmm. like, I hope that our messy bedroom, because his camera is like pointing towards my side of the bedroom, <laughs> which isn't as clean as his side of the bedroom. Um, he's like, no, that's why I was cleaning up. And it was just the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whew, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, I know you're married. So does your husband also mm -hmm. work from home or how does that work for your family? No. So he's a sheet metal worker. So he's pretty much always on the job site. And when the pandemic hit, his job exploded. Oh, um, how? So what we've done a lot, I, that's the reaction that I get from most people. Um, he does a lot of work in hospitals and clinics and other areas like that. And what we found was that we didn't have enough negative pressure rooms to accommodate the influx of COVID patients that we were expecting to have. So he spent a great deal of time crawling in the ductwork of the hospitals and um, even there, like there's a behavioral health clinic here that they were worried any inpatient behavioral health, they needed a place to put those COVID positive patients. So he did a ton of work trying to get everybody ready from a infection control standpoint construction um, for the pandemic. Also, a lot of schools said, well, we're going to be shut down for a while. We've had all these projects on the back burner. Let's get them done while the kids aren't here. So the number of school jobs that they had exploded and all this work was we need it done now. We need it done now. So he really has not been able to share very much of the childcare burden. It's pretty much all fallen to me. Working from home with three kids this summer. Yeah. So let's talk about what's yeah. happening right now. So in the past, they were at school. And then you had mm -hmm. them for the whole summer, which they're just going back to school, what, this week or last week? Um, so this is their third week. And previously in the summer, and even some this summer, my mother-in-law watches them quite a bit. So she works for the school system and she has summers off. So she took them for me two days a week this summer, which was a total lifesaver to have them out of the house. So I would try to stack my meetings and all my projects and be as efficient as I could those couple days a week whenever I actually got to work uninterrupted. And now? What kind of school are they in? Are you choosing online, hybrid, in person? So our school district initially wanted to go hybrid. Um, numbers kind of started rising in our area. We're a college town, and everyone was very afraid that when all the college kids came back, we would see a spike in cases, and that is starting to happen. Um, not as bad as a lot of college campuses, you know, the ones that you're hearing about that have a 1,000 positive cases on campus. I think we're at about 30 positive cases on campus right now which still isn't great, um, but it's just it's just part of it. You know, we're going to have to learn to manage that influx of cases. So all of our school districts in our in the town that I live in ultimately decided to go full remote, at least to start. Full um, remote. Our school like district, online. full remote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our district um, initially had said, if numbers fall under a certain area, we'll consider going back to the hybrid plan. I don't think our numbers are going to get there anytime soon. And I don't know if they're going to revisit that. Um, 
Additionally, we have a lot of challenges with internet access in our area. So we're a beautiful rural area with lots and lots of hills, but this terrain presents a really big challenge for internet. Um, there is a, a big grant funded program in our area um, that started about a year or two ago to try to roll out more internet access to people. That doesn't help me right now. Um, so we were getting by with just hotspots. And hotspots worked fine until the pandemic hit, and then suddenly everybody was relying on their hotspot, wow. and the speeds just slowed down to a screeching halt. Um, especially before, when I was working from home, it was just me on my laptop, and then suddenly it's me on my laptop and three kids on devices, and I, I couldn't use the TV to distract them because I we didn't have enough internet speed to turn the TV on and attempt to use my laptop. I would get kicked off sometimes every 10 minutes trying to work and you're in the middle of doing like a big build and get kicked off. It was terrible. So ultimately I, I keep referencing my handy construction husband. We ended up putting a 70 foot tower in our yard so that we could hit a tower that's about four and a half miles away um, and finally get internet access. And it has been a game changer. Wow. Now, can you still let the kids streaming stream on their devices while you're working? Yeah. Yeah. So, so now now we can we're good they can watch tv they can have their ipad out or have the laptop out and be working so awesome um, Last we just got that we just got that established about two weeks ago and we didn't even know if it was going to work even after we put the tower up we weren't we did it without certainty that we were going to be able to hit that tower we put it up and then my husband had to trim a bunch of trees and finally we were able to overcome the terrain and get it but when our school district announced that they were going full remote i knew that there was no way we were going to be able to do that because we didn't have enough internet speeds. Um, our school, what the option they gave us to overcome that was actually, well, you can come park in our parking lot and your kids can sit in the car and work all day <laughs> on their <laughs> laptop or whatever. Do you think that families are actually going to have to do that? There are some that are, and they, I, I gave a lot of pushback and I think other families did. So they ultimately decided to open up the computer labs at the school mm. for three hours in the evening, twice a week, but three hours in the evening, twice a week is not, adequate to do all the schoolwork that they need to be doing mm -hmm. at their age. I know some schools are having the kids literally sitting in the live meetings all day versus other ones mm -hmm. like our school, we're just doing like short meetings, sometimes 15 minutes or 20 minutes. And then there's like an interactive notebook that they can work on on their computer, but it's not like video streaming the whole time. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing with your kids? Yeah, so I got way off topic there, didn't I? <laughs> so what we decided, because we didn't have enough internet access and because we didn't have child care, and looking at what child care would cost us, knowing that I, I just couldn't keep going on. I just couldn't keep going the way things were going. So we looked into private schools in our area, and we found a Catholic school about 20 minutes from our house that was bringing students back full time. They have a very robust safety plan in place, something that we were very comfortable with. Um, kids and faculty, everybody wears masks all day. Even when they're outside at recess, they have to keep their mask on. They're only allowed to take it off for lunch. And the kids have even commented like, mom, we only get five minutes to eat our lunch because they don't want us to keep our masks off. <laughs> so everybody's masked. They have dividers between the desks. They're spending as much time outside as they can. They have a couple outdoor classroom spaces. Um, they're keeping each class isolated only to that class. So they don't mingle with other classes. They don't allow parents in the building at all, which is kind of difficult for me to swallow. Like I don't even get to see where my, my kids' rooms, I don't get to walk them in on their first day. Um, what grade are your kids in this year? They are first, fourth, and sixth. Yeah, it sounds like you have way more options as, as far as like the safety protocols um, yeah. than what we are yeah. offered here in our area. And uh, yeah. Arizona is, um, I, I saw a chart someone posted the other day about like how different states are handling um, school safety options. And mm -hmm. ours was not, ours was like at the bottom end and, and Illinois was like way different. And I, I want to hear more about the outdoor classrooms. Do you know what those are like? Yeah, so they actually have a pavilion space um, that was already set up, and they use that some with, like, picnic tables. They also had ordered tents so that the kids could be outside even if it rained. I don't think they've even had to put them up yet, um, or if they have got those in, but they have talked about doing that. And they have a little, um, the kids call it the, the awning or something. It's a little quarter space between the school and the church, and they've got chairs and things set up out there so the kids 
can be out there. Um, they're not doing PE right now, but they are taking them out for recess twice a day. So they get to go outside and, and play on the playground. They clean the playground off after each class is done and leaves. So they're being very, very careful. I love it. We feel really good about it. <laughs> I would feel and good knock about on wood. <laughs> knock on wood. We're three weeks in and everything is still smooth sailing. Yeah, I think I would be much more comfortable with that plan than what we were offered. And so we're choosing to go fully online, remote. Home-based learning is yeah. what they're calling it right now. So let's talk a little bit about your household and how you're managing things. Um, I know everyone has a different threshold of how they <laughs> feel comfortable as far as like division of household duties and uh, just cleanliness. How are you handling things or what is what strategies do you have as far as balancing that home life, work life all in the same space? It's much better now that the kids are back at school, but uh, my mental health was rapidly deteriorating when they were home all summer, just trashing the house all day. Um, I did have a sitter who was here for about three to four hours a day to keep them busy during that time. And we have a pool. I really encouraged her to take them outside and keep them outside as much as she could. But, you know, kids, they're still in and out and interrupting. But it was a it was a godsend having her here just those few hours a day so that they weren't continually being ignored by their parent all day long. They had someone to give them attention and get them snacks and, and, uh, you know, take them even to when the parks open back up, she could take them to the parks and things like that. Um, but it, I found it very, very difficult, especially my space being in the kitchen. Like I, I have a hard time handling it when there was dishes just piling up and piling up and I was working and couldn't do anything about it. Um, it, that kind of thing really stressed me out. We we have a cleaning lady that comes every two weeks. I had her coming every week <laughs> this summer. <laughs> and it was worth every penny that it cost us. Um, my husband is helpful around the house. He does a lot. We, we own 12 acres. So he does all the outside maintenance. And there is quite a bit involved in that. So a lot of the indoor falls on me. Which is, you know, it's fine. It's fair. But... Whenever the kids are at home, your amount of work drastically increases. And the kids have chores, but they don't really do things to my standard. And sometimes it's harder to get the kids to do it than it is to just do it yourself. So um, my evenings were not stacked with quality time with my kids, which is what I'm used to whenever they're out of the house all day. They come home. I'm happy to see them. We do things together. We play together. We cook together. And in those days, it was walking around the house, picking up the messes that they had made all day and trying to put everything back in order. How did your employer, longer hours. how did your employer handle it when you were dealing with your children while you're working? How did that go over? Well, I have a really funny story. <laughs> There's always a good story. So I was on a work call with um, some, you know, important people, one of which was a VP level position at the, um, at the company that I work for and we were talking to a vendor um, and it was a, a, criti a critical topic, um, a call that had been scheduled weeks in advance and I was going to be, you know, on top of my game and, and really on it. You have those calls that you can kind of slack off, you know, it's just your team and then you have those really important calls. This was one of those really important calls. So I have a background that I set on my um, Teams or WebEx, whatever it is, so no one can see what's going on in the background. They can only see me. So no one knew this was going on in the background, but my youngest kept coming up to me and asking for breakfast. And I kept just pushing him away and pushing him away like I do, like, you know, the mom, go away, figure it out for yourself. So he decided he was going to make some toast. So <laughs> I don't know what he did, but he ended up completely frying the toaster oven. And the next thing I know, my entire house is full of smoke and my smoke alarm is going off. And I've got my headset on and I'm muting and I'm thinking like, nobody knows this is going on. Like I'm playing it cool. So i um, I'm only unmuting to talk and finally my coworkers figure out like we keep hearing this beeping noise every time Nicole is talking. So finally, um, our VP level physician, I'm talking and he said, Nicole, is there something going on at your house that you need to address? <laughs> so at that point I came clean. I was like, yeah, my whole house is full of smoke. I had gotten up and unplugged the toaster already, but, um, yeah. And later, you know, everybody laughs about it. It's a, it's a legendary story at my office. The time Nicole's kid almost caught her house on fire while she was on a and call. And you were just trying to play it cool the whole time. <laughs> I really thought I was playing it cool. Apparently, I was not. I was not. <laughs> That's a good one. And so that helped you yeah. push, uh, helped push the idea of the in-person school. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, for sure. And the kids, you know, educationally, they suffered quite a bit 
during the pandemic because I couldn't be on there helping them get their work done during the day, when it, which was the times they were expected to be on a Zoom call and whatnot, and we didn't have enough connectivity, and it was it was an easy decision in the end. I think that uh, different people's workflow really can make or break it as far as like how much they can help their children versus not. Like if you have total flexibility and you you make your own hours versus if you're expected to show up and be mm-hmm. on, um, I can't even say it right. If you're expected to show up and be on your game that day. Yeah, for you know certain hours. And I am expected to be on from 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. Those are my working hours. I'm expected to be responding to messages quickly and any scheduled calls, and I, I need to be on those. Um, so, And I guess there's, there's differences between, like we were talking about generations and even departments. So my office is in the IT department, but I report to the pharmacy reporting structure. So within the IT department, we're all very comfortable with, you know, kind of a lax work-home balance, um, not clearly defined boundaries there. So if a kid runs up to you when you're in the middle of a call or your dog or whatever, everybody just says, oh, and thinks that it's cute. Um, but when you're interacting with other departments, they often have the perception like, oh, look, she's she's at home taking care of her kids and playing with her kids and not actually working and not on top of her game and, you know, can kind of have a negative view of what you're actually doing. So And it probably to... depends a lot about who you're reporting to. Yeah. So you mentioned yeah, so to I, me. I did. Go ahead. I did get a lot from my boss initially. Um, he actually denied a couple of his direct reports application to work from home when the pandemic started. Um, he later got pushed back from higher up to soften his stance on that and um, did allow some of the other employees that he had previously denied to start working from home. Um, But there's just, especially I think within healthcare as a pharmacist, there's just a a very um, longstanding view that you have to be in that setting and you have to be right there in the middle of it all. Um, So it's very, uh, a very new idea that someone like me can do their job from home. Whereas I think if you, when you look at an IT department, everybody's very comfortable with technology um, and very comfortable with the idea of doing work from home. When I worked for a Mayo Clinic years ago, uh, it was actually an expectation and a requirement that if we had children that they needed to have childcare. Uh, it could be in-home childcare or, you know, external childcare, but uh, we weren't allowed to be in charge of our own children while we were on the clock. We were hourly and it was, Mm -hmm. you know, very cut and dry in that way. But um, it sounds as though a lot of employers are providing more flexibility, at least through the summer. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like, uh, did you have other coworkers who were kind of dealing with the same thing and and like empathizing with you in that area? For sure. Um, And like I said, within the IT department, there was a completely different comfort level with it compared to the pharmacy department, which was my reporting structure. Um, And that's kind of a generalization. There were many pharmacy employees, those with young children who were very sympathetic to the situation. And from very high up at my organization, there was a lot of sympathy toward working parents. And that has helped tremendously. Um, They sent a survey out when all these schools were announcing that they were going remote. They sent a survey out that said, what could we do to help you? They're like, we don't know if, you know, if if we don't know where the problems are, we can't help you. So help us find the problems. We don't know what kind of solutions we'll be able to come up with, but we're we're here for you. We're going to work with you. Um, And having that level of support from, from very high up has really helped soften some of those people's stance on work from home. I love it. So they told you from the beginning, we're listening. Yeah. And um, they said, we need you. We need you. You know, we don't want to lose our employees over this. Mm -hmm. You know, you, a lot of you are good employees. You've been here forever and this is not your fault. You didn't ask for this. Um, You don't have any other options. So we'll work with you. I love hearing that. And that has been, yeah, that, that was really inspiring to me. A lot of people have had have felt as though they have to choose between work exactly. and family. So, yeah. Well, let's go back a little bit to the beginning. When you first started working from home, those two days a week or as needed, what were some of the initial challenges that you faced as you were just trying to figure this out? <laughs> I really did not face any challenges whenever it was, you know, me working from home a couple days a week while the kids were at school. It was all just beautiful and amazing and everything it was cracked up to be. Um, I wasn't burnt out on working from home. Not that I'm necessarily burnt out on it now, but it is lonely and it is isolating. And it's strange to me. Every day I drop the kids off 
at school and then I come home to a quiet, empty house. Um, in those days, I it was... That. <laughs> I know. <laughs> in those days, you know, it was only two days a week, so it was wonderful. Um, and I could really sit and focus. So I, I just absolutely loved, I treasured those days and I felt so much more productive when I had those work from home days. So what were those things that you enjoyed? Like what freedoms and flexibilities made it, made it feel wonderful for you? Um, I didn't have to put real clothes on. <laughs> I could stay in my pajamas all day if I wanted to. Um, no interruption. So my work setting, we actually outgrew our office space three or four years ago. We crammed a building that's meant to host about 50 employees. We crammed about 100 into it. So I actually shared an office with two other people. And there were people that do the same job as me. And I have an amazing working relationship with them. And um, I miss them. We've been doing like a weekly lunch and trying to, to get together where we can. And we um, message back and forth on Teams or Jabber all day long and still have that connection. But it was a very distracting environment, sharing an office with multiple people um, and not really a lot of boundaries in that office setting either. We had a lot of cubicles and just not very much private, quiet space where you could really sit and focus and get your work done. So that's what I really enjoyed about those work from home days early on. Do, do you feel as though when you're working from home that you still get the, I don't know, like the, the small chat, the, the water cooler <laughs> talk? You don't. Um, so like I said, I, I prioritize communicating closely with my teammates and we message back and forth all day, every day. But, you know, I do miss that running into somebody else in the hallway and saying, oh, hey, how are you? How are the kids? And and that kind of small talk and getting those relationships, because, I mean, what I've found every job that I've ever had, what makes or breaks the job at the end of the day really is your coworkers and your working relationship with them and even personal relationship with them. If you're working with people that you can relate to and people that you want to get up and see every day, it makes that job a lot more satisfying and enjoyable. So I miss that. And I feel really bad for the new employees that we've oriented during this because they don't know any of us. Hmm. Um, and they were just kind of thrown in, not thrown into it, but started under less than ideal circumstances, I guess, and probably do feel isolated. So you've hired even during the pandemic? Not many. Um, we hired, like I said, one, we hired a VP level physician who was hired prior to the pandemic started. We hired a new CIO <laughs> who started in the middle of the pandemic. Poor guy. Um, so we have had a handful. There's, there's not a hiring freeze necessarily, but we did face furloughs. In the beginning, I was furloughed half time pretty much the whole month of April and then furloughed full time in May for a while and then went out on FMLA following surgery for a few weeks after that. Okay. So, um, and I guess that was kind of the difference also to go back to the kids doing remote work in the spring versus looking at what it would look like in the fall. I was only working half time in the spring, really more than half time because who actually can get everything done? in four hours, <laughs> but working half time that whole month of April, I still couldn't get everything done. So I knew there was no way I'd be able to do it full time in the fall. Right. Now, now that your kids are back in school, in-person school, and you improved the internet connectivity, do you feel as though things are kind of feeling normal again, as far as like what you experienced uh, before the, the pandemic and the freezes and everything or the, so it, yeah. it's a new normal, you know, everybody's got a new normal right now. Um, as everyone says, we're not going to go back to normal until we have a vaccine and everybody's been vaccinated to the point of herd immunity. We're still several months away from that. I believe that as a pharmacist, we're still several months away from that. Um, as much as everyone would like to get back to normal, our normal right now is working from home. It is at any point in time, my kids could be removed from the school setting. If they have a child test positive in their class, that entire class shuts down for 10 days. We're, we're not entirely clear on if their siblings can continue to go, but it's possible that their siblings would have to stay home. So I know that at any point in time, I it's pretty much inevitable that we will be back in that situation of the kids doing remote learning with me at home with them. Right, right, right. <laughs> So let's talk about present frustrations. We talked about the challenges that you didn't actually experience early on. 
um, other than knowing that your kids might come back at any time. As you're working from home for some time now and you're kind of, you've been into it for several months full time, have any new things cropped up that make, that are a challenge for you? Um, Work-life balance for sure. It's not something I've ever been good at, setting those boundaries. Um, We take call one out of every three weeks. So I'm used to always having to have my laptop with me um, and being able, you know, getting a call at any point in time, even the weeks that I'm not on call, it's not unusual for me to get a call after hours, especially in these days of COVID. Um, We could be facing surge planning at any time where we've outgrown the current size of our COVID unit and we need to expand it. There's new treatments coming on and off the market all the time and having to build the protocols for that. So I really don't have much work-life balance and it's that much harder if your desk is in your li- in your kitchen and it's sitting there staring at you while you're trying to cook dinner and you know that there's that email that you didn't answer and you start thinking about all those things you didn't do. It's harder to shut off and it's really tempting to go back and open the laptop and, and do a little bit more work. Mm-hmm. Have you but thought you have about to... possibly moving your desk again? Where was it before? So the room that it was in before we're now remodeling. So that room is out of the question. Um, what my husband and I talked about was if the kids were to continue with remote learning in the fall, we talked about moving it into the basement, into a quiet space. Um, I really didn't want to do that because I really like my view and mm. it really does help morale. I think I would I would not do well if I was in a basement without any natural light and alone and isolated and lonely for several hours a day. I think that mentally I would have a really hard time with that. Logistically, um, I wonder if, um, do you sit next to your router? Are you connected with Ethernet? I, I do connect with Ethernet now, yeah. Would you be able to do that if you moved on to the basement? Could you move the router with you? That's a very good point. So, yeah, when we talked about doing this before, we were doing the hotspot thing. So, um, no, we actually ran the router directly into where my office space is so that I would be able to connect and know that I would have a good connection. Right. I've lived this life. I've uh, ev- almost yep. every single time I've moved... Uh, my employer required me to have uh, the router in the same room and Ethernet connection. Yeah. And so I've had the cable guys out in all of my houses poking holes into walls and, you know, almost every yeah. single house we've had to do that. Yeah. And what about... So a question for you. What's that? Do you feel like, do you feel like as time goes on and more and more people are working from home and employers are being more, hopefully being more accommodating like my employer is being, um, do you find some of those requirements being relaxed a little bit? You know, the childcare requirements, being plugged into an Ethernet, things like that? Or do you think that will continue to be strict? Hmm. Well, it depends on who you work for, I think. And I had been working for that employer that was strict about it. But now, well, actually, I do teach in the mornings, in the early, we or <laughs> like 2 a.m., I start teaching mm-hmm. sometimes 3, 4, 5 a.m. before my kids are awake. And my husband is mm-hmm. always just sleeping. So if they need something in the middle of the night, they go to him first. Like if they're barfing or something, you know, <laughs> he's the one who gets up and helps. And so that is a huge perk to your schedule. It is good. Um, oh, it's good, except for having to wake up at 2 a.m. And I'm not a morning person. Um, so, but the people, the, I, I'm an independent contractor for those companies, but they do have a requirement that children are not to be seen or heard more or less, uh, when you're on camera yeah. with your clients. And, yeah. uh, one of the companies was a little bit more lax about that when I first started and I'd have like, maybe after our session was complete and I was just saying goodbye, I had a little, um, my son actually walked in and he, he was kind of being shy and he was off camera and I was doing my very mm-hmm. first lesson ever with this little guy in China. And I invited my son to come in and say hi. Well, that little boy ended up being my regular student for almost two years now. And I think part of it is because he met my son. And they've even had a few like little video messages for each other on WeChat a few times. And I think that's one reason why I've been able to keep that student for so long, because they know that, you know, I have a son the same age, and they kind of have that little connection. Um, His mom even tried to send me masks um, when she knew that we couldn't get masks. She tried to, um, she tried, she looked into it. And uh, at that point, they weren't allowing a lot of international shipping. And and even there was like requirements of how many they could have shipped. And in the end, I'm like, just please keep the masks for your family because it it wouldn't have worked. Um, So building that connection. Uh, And then sometimes cats, my cat would come in and my students would show me their (laughs) cat and I'd show them my cat. But I think since then, in the last maybe six months, they've been more strict about that. 
Uh, and then the other company that I was working with is like, no, no cats, no, no dogs, no yeah. pets, no, no kids. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, they're sleeping. Uh, mm-hmm. When I worked for Mayo Clinic, I don't know what they're doing now. Um, you know, part of it is I get to control my own schedule. I get to pick whether or not I'm mm-hmm. going to accept clients during the, you know, such and such days. And so I can plan around kids stuff a little easier. And so I think mm-hmm. if I was still the hourly employee, I don't know. I don't know what their protocols are right now. Yeah. It's a good question. I just hope that people are being understanding and flexible. Those who don't have children need to talk with their friends who do yeah. and hear it, you yeah. know, firsthand from someone yeah. they like <laughs> rather than, yeah. you know, as a manager, just being annoyed um, yeah. by the disruptions. Yep. But I think parents also need to, um, well, we were talking about this uh, beforehand, just need to have a plan in place. You know, if you do have mm-hmm. little ones and we were talking about personalities, let's talk about personality of your kids. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are in my face. How about yours? Yes. My kids are very, very high energy and very high maintenance. Um, and I love that about them. And we have always encouraged them to be that way. Um, we started them all in gymnastics when they were two or three, because my mother-in-law said, your kids are just like your husband. They, you need to put them in gymnastics or they're going to fall and get hurt. <laughs> so we started them in gymnastics so that they would learn to fall without getting hurt. Um, so they're always bouncing off the walls. We have a high bar in our living room, which I can see from my desk here, and they are flipping on it all day. That's We bought them that as an Easter present, and it has been a true lifesaver. It gives them something that they can do to um, get some of that energy out whenever they're stuck in the house. Um, when I worked for um, the emergency room, I worked. Uh, I typed their emergency room notes for many years, and I swore mm-hmm. we would never own a trampoline. We would never, you know, <laughs> do motocross or anything like that. But then right. I gave birth to my son, and he like yeah. literally needs, craves, requires to be able yeah. to bounce. And if we don't give him a trampoline, and we just got a little rebounding one, like an exercise one for adults probably. And we have pretty, pretty strict rules about who can jump on it one person at a time. And it stays in the garage when it's not in use. Um, but if, if he don't give him that, he'll jump on the couch, he'll jump all over you, yeah. you know? And so, yeah. um, just giving them something to expend that energy into is, is good. And there, our kids are used to when we're at home, getting more attention from us. So it's really, really difficult. I think the younger they are, it's difficult for them to continually be rejected by their mother and watch their mother continually putting her job before them Mm -hmm. when they're at home. They don't understand that. And I think that can be damaging in the long run. You have to be very, very careful about trying to set boundaries with your kids, but knowing that it may, it may not be possible depending on the personality and age of the child. And your youngest is six. So I'm thinking yeah. about those people who have two-year-olds and one-year-olds yeah. and five-year-olds. We actually hired, uh, like we called it a mother's helper or like a part-time mm-hmm. nanny that would come into our home even just four hours a day. And it was a big sacrificial sacrificial expense for our family, but it was necessary. I wasn't sleeping because I was working in the night. I wasn't sleeping unless I had someone watching my kids and keeping them safe. I can't just strap a kid into their high chair for four hours. You have to have, you know, some sort of supervision. So hey, you and I talked about this earlier. I feel like our society right now has this stigma that, oh, well, parents can just work from home and then their kids can do their schoolwork and this is going to work out for everybody. Our kids stay out of the schools. Nobody gets exposed to the virus. Everything's great, right? In reality, that that does not happen. Um, You cannot supervise a child and do your job well. What I kept saying the entire pandemic is I feel like I'm failing at everything. With my kids here, I'm failing at being a mom and I'm failing at being an employee. I I couldn't do both. Yeah. And my hope, my dream for this year was I have a kindergartner going to school full time and I'm going to finally be able to change my schedule back to daytime hours and live a life with, with sleep and the same schedule as my family and family time on the weekends. And I'm coming to that realization that mm, that might still have to be on hold for another year because I am still having to wake up super early to start all of the stuff before they start school, which um, I, I can get a tiny little bit of work done while I'm supervising. But my husband's on the clock like he is logging in at a certain time and logging out. And when he takes his one hour lunch break, I am like, OK, I'm off duty. I'm going to go do my work now. And then I'll come back and help the kids as soon as you go back in and we have to coordinate meetings. And if he's in an important meeting, then I have to keep the kids, you know, away. Um, it's a lot to juggle. And that's with two adults in the home 
who love the children and are supervising them at, while trying to work. But basically I have to, I have yeah. to be on call, you know, for, you know, my daughter couldn't log into three of her classes the other day and it took two hours. I held up three fingers, but it took two hours <laughs> to try to remedy that and get to a solution for that. And so it was two hours. I couldn't do work. I feel like I spent the entire spring and summer and the more time went on, the more I felt like I was just hanging by threads. And I was hanging by threads thinking this is going to get better in the fall. Like everybody kept thinking this is going to get better, right? Like our numbers are going to decrease. The virus will go away. That's what everybody's hoping. And that isn't what happened. And I, I felt like I can, I can do this. I can do this until the fall. If there's an end date, I can continue to do this and get by. And then when we started to realize there's not an end date here, I knew we had to do something different. Right. I know we were just thinking that it was going to be just one month back in spring break happened. And then I was like, okay, well, we'll yeah. start school in, in July. And we have decided to keep our kids home for the year, but it's taken me about eight weeks to like embrace that concept and just reconcile the fact that my life isn't going to look like what I expected for the next year. It's a very yeah. gradual accept acceptance. Let's talk about social life a little bit before pandemic and during and maybe after. How you said you communicate with your coworkers. And I don't even know what Jabber is. Can you tell me about that? <laughs> it's Cisco's product that's kind of like instant messaging, um, similar to Teams. Have you used Teams? Uh -huh. We are. Um, we use Teams with just the IT department. We're kind of trialing it to see if we want to roll it out hospital-wide. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of our non-IT facilities are still using Jabber, so we use both. Um, one of the things that our department did that I absolutely love, they've always had a culture committee, but they kind of ramped up the culture committee to make it specific to how do we keep a good working culture when we're never together. So one of the things that the representative from our team came up with was doing monthly block parties. So once a month from four to five on Thursdays, um, we get together and it's it's a fun meeting. This is the meeting where people are encouraged to bring their kids and their dogs and their cats and um, your family's encouraged to participate. And, uh, you know, even after 430, if you want to have a glass of wine with your coworkers, you can have a glass of wine if you're not on call. Um, and we do kind of like icebreaker little topics. Um, the one last month was what's the most exciting thing that's happened to you this month and then do just a lot of interactive dialogue and it's been it's been really fun and that's just been more recently or were you doing that in person before the work from home situation i guess it never felt necessarily necessary when we were in person um we would do informal gatherings and things um get together um for happy hour here and there or go out to lunch together with your coworkers, that kind of thing but none of those are really possible right now a lot of people aren't even comfortable with outdoor dining, mm -hmm. which our family, we, we are comfortable with that. And we do, you know, meet friends for dinner here and there and, and eat outside. Luckily, the weather's cooperated so far. That'll be a different story when the weather turns cold and the days are short. But for the time being, at least we can do that. So when we knew each other back in Southern Illinois, back in the day, it was before my baby was born and she's five. So about six <laughs> years ago, six, seven, eight years ago, we would get together once a month, a couple times a month to do our baby wearing walks and we would all strap yeah. our kids on our back or tie them on to our front or whatever and get a few strollers and push them around the lake, which looking back, those were really good times. What are you doing now yeah. as far as just like friends or hobbies? Um, I think a lot of people do this. We have a couple of friends that we're very close with that we kind of formed a, a little pod with, you could say, um, in the beginning days when everybody was very, very afraid to do anything, even leave the house, um, my friend and I decided, well, we can still run together. So we would run together three or four times a week. And that was, um, that was like life saving. Like you'd spend all day like waiting. Okay. At least I get to meet my friend and run tonight. I remember pretty early on in the pandemic, a bug flew in my eye and I was trying to fish this bug out of my eye and my friend standing there like, I don't want to touch you. I don't want to touch your tears. I'm not supposed to be even, you know, running this close to you, but <laughs> there's this bug in your eye and I can't help you get it out. <laughs> Did you get it out? I got it out. <laughs> oh, no. So you've been running. That's been kind of like your outlet for a long time now, right? Yeah. And uh, we have a camper. So we've done quite a bit of camping with our friends when the campgrounds open back up. Because you can stay outside. You can do it safely. Right. I want to talk about your office one more time before we finish. Can we talk about ergonomics for a second? You mentioned that your employer provided your headset. Uh, mm-hmm. 
did they provide anything else for you to bring home? They provided the standard office equipment. So we get two Dell monitors. Um, most of us already had laptops. They provided a docking station before I was just plugging my extra monitor into my laptop, but now I have a full docking station. Um, they didn't provide any office equipment like chairs and things. And I did find that the chair that I had before, I was really having a lot of neck and shoulder pain. So I ordered a new chair and that's helped quite a bit. Um, once in a while, if I have something that I really only need one screen for, I'll even sit on the couch all day and recline. And that's pretty nice <laughs> to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's one thing that I've heard again and again and again, as I've been doing some market research and asking a lot of people, they talk about the chair more than you would yeah. expect. I think a lot of yeah, people. I had no idea what a difference it made. Yeah, were you? What kind of chair were you sitting on before you ordered one? Um, it was an it was an office chair, but it had a really really high back, so I I couldn't lean back, and I was pretty much stuck in an upright position. Mm. I keep meaning to get one of those balls to sit on. I had a standing desk whenever I was in my office, which was nice because I could work and stand. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll set my laptop on like a higher tabletop surface and right and be able to stand to work. Well, I think we're going to wrap up here. Do you have anything that you would like to share as far as just advice for someone who's just starting working from home or is kind of, is kind of thrown into it unexpectedly during these times? Um, I would say don't count yourself out from having a work from home job. When I was in pharmacy school, I certainly never expected that I would ever have a work from home job. And now a lot of people in my profession have been forced into this work from home. And um, I hope a lot of these changes are permanent because it is a satisfier, but you have to understand that it doesn't come without challenges. You know, it was all rosy and beautiful whenever I got to do it just two days a week. But when I got thrown into it full time, I did have to, to make some of those adjustments to, to make it work both with work home balance and, and staying productive and staying on task and getting the job done. I have loved this conversation. Thank you so much, Nicole. <laughs> Thank you, April. And we'll see you next time. I think we're going to call this, and it's been about 45 minutes. And, yeah, thank you. We'll, um, we'll continue having more conversations like this. Uh, the person I interviewed last, he uh, is he's a work-from-home dad, and he's doing a lot of gaming and things like that. And going forward, I think it's nice to talk with people who are – in corporate versus entrepreneurs and kind of having that mix. So appreciate a uh, completely different personality and insight and experience coming from you today. All right. Thank you so much, Nicole. We'll call it Thanks, good. Thanks, April. Take care. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye.